So this is my presentation on Heidegger's The Question Concerning Technology. Um, I hope through this presentation that some of the themes are made clear. I attempted to unpack some of the major themes um, since it's very difficult to go over the bulk of this text. But I hope that this uh, presentation will help in finding some of the things that he was talking about and um, relate them back to the class. Uh, I'll start off, we'll give a little background on Heidegger. Uh, he's a German philosopher from the 20th century, uh, most known for um, his theory of the, of the question of being, uh, which is related in his most famous work, Being in Time, which uh, talks about the way how the way of our way we question uh, defines um, our nature and who we are. And uh, within it, he also talks criticizes heavily criticizes Western civilizations way of questioning, that they've lost sight of the be of being through um, their, their, th their way of philosophizing. Um, his works um, and you know, thoughts are influenced by St. Augustine of Hippo, um, Aristotle and the Greeks, Wilhelm Dilthey, and Friedrich Nietzsche, who he wrote about extensively later in his career. Um, and while he contributed uh, quite a bit to the phil field of philosophy, uh, he's uh, his viewpoints are not seen as controversial due to his um, participation with the Nazi party and um, it's some of his theories, beliefs, and um, essays have been called into question due to those, um, those ties of national social socialism and it's, um, it can be very difficult for some people to take him seriously today due to that. Okay, uh, in order to understand this text a little better I took some of the terms that Heidegger used over and over again in the, in the reading and attempted to define them to the best of my ability. So one of the terms, uh, the first one, bringing forth um, the arising of something out of itself. Um, I kind of took this um, and from the text and from what I had read as something like either something nature and us, technology, and um, its ability to bring forth something um, out of something else and like this can like like whether it's a different viewpoint or different use um, but how things like technology um, art science um, even us to an extent have the ability to bring forth um, something into something else conceal brings out of concealment into concealment and when you bring something out that also is the ability to bring out something in others. It's kind of a cycle in a way, at least that's how I saw it. Um, standing reserve relates to um, how we are subjecting certain things, especially those in nature, to be on hand for our usage. Um, how, riv how rivers and river and land are now resources to be on hand for us to use whenever we need them. Um, and this is also related to setting upon, which is related to uh, the naming or ordering um, defining the use for something, uh, taking a river, and it's not a river anymore, it's a resource. Uh, in framing, this is probably the most difficult thing to um, define, but I took it mostly as like a framework in a way. Um, it's dangerous. Um, he relates it to, it's denies man from entering into a more original revealing. Uh, it's restrictive in a way, it's something that, it's like a, it's, it's something that we use to operate in, to view things a certain way. It's, it's related to technology, related to how um, we're using technology to view the world in a very distinct, quantifiable way that eliminates the mystery out of it, strips that mystery away, and um, makes it into something less mysterious and um, less less of its being, I guess you could say. Um, revealing is just technology does this, that's what he relates to most, is that this is this is part of the essence of technology. It unconceals things, it reveals what wasn't norm, was not normally present. Um, destining the purpose of something, its designation, kind of relating the setting upon, um, in that we are destining things in a certain way now the, through technology. Um, and techne, this is kind of related to the Greek term, and um, this is, uh, it belongs to bringing forth through revealing. This isn't really related to um, 
manufacturing um, in the mechanical or technology in that sense. Techne is, um, as stated in the reading, is the name not only for the activities and skills of the craftsmen, but also for the arts of the mind and the fine arts. It's, it's, as he says later, it's something poetic. Um, so it's not just, this is more related to the mystery of technology that we should, that should be worked towards in his, in Heidegger's view. So the question concerning technology, um, Tech, the biggest theme that I got is technology is not equivalent to the essence of technology. It's not, people think about technology solely in terms of mechanical or manufacturing, um, and that's not true. It's not, in, it's, he sees it as a means to an end and as a human activity. It's not one or the other, it's both. And modern technology is not fundamentally different from these things. Technology has, according to Heidegger, um, technology has been around for a long time, and tech, modern technology is not any even though it's seen by many people as a huge leap in innovation and that it's fundamentally changed the way we view things, like that's not true. It's um, it has it has is just as um, it just has it has just as many of the same uses as um, anything that has come before it, like writing in the printing press and things we've talked about in class before. It's not so different that it's going to fundamentally change who we are unless we let it. That's, and that's what he dis essentially disagrees with in this Western philosophy, is that um, at this point in time, there's so much, with the Industrial Revolution, there's so much technological innovation, and he's people are viewing it as something um, that's going to change the world and shape it. And Heidegger doesn't think this, doesn't believe in this, he doesn't think that this is um, a good thing to fundamentally change and shape the world because he is um, very much for keeping the mystery of things and that and at this point in time you see a sh um, science taking a more active role in defining and categorizing the world and he also disagrees with this and that all well, sciences and everything has been around for a long time we've been using it for a thing it's not um, I guess what would be is not the be all end all um, for categorizing and shaping and finding the world. Okay, so according to Heidegger, technology is no mere means, which essentially means that it's not just a tool, it's not just something that we can use to um, reduce the world down to its most basic function. It's a method of revealing. It can s we, through technology, we can see things in ways that we weren't able to see it before. We can view the the river as a resource instead of just a ri instead of a river. But according to him, that's not necessarily a good thing. You know, the technology that the way we're using technology um, is limiting the world and it's taking the mystery out of it. Um, and we're not really understanding it. We're just trying to assert our will over it. So this Western philosophy of technology is very unappealing to Heidegger. It's not just we're we're so wrapped up in asserting our will over it and mastering technology and, and taking over everything um, that we're forgetting and um, how much mystery there is in the world. And so. Uh, what is the danger that Heidegger sees in technology and the way it's being used with, uh, in relation to Western um, civilization? Um, and this relates to um, the rule of enframing, which, um, according to him, is this idea that nature must be orderable. That we have come to this point where we're trying to quantify everything within nature and to distill it, basically, into its, into its most, um, well, basic form. Um, and this goes in the idea of resources, labeling and processing everything. Um, and one of his quotes sums this, this up very well. And agriculture is now the mechanized food industry. It's not just, you know, living. It's not looking at the land and seeing it for its beauty and mystery. It's looking at it and um, stripping it bare and using it for our own purposes. And he also relates this to science and how and we have modern physics to explain things and everything is reduced to a quantifiable number which to Heidegger is not a good thing okay so he does see a way out of this he that's and that's really part of why writing this essay is he's using it as a way to alert alert people to the dangers of the way they're thinking and to um, kind of try and reverse the thought process concerning technology um, 
and he's looking that people need to move away from mastering technology and move towards understanding it um, and examining the mystery um, focus on being and not see technology as something that needs to be solved but seeing it as something that we need to we can work with but we can't let it overcome us we can't let it um, fundamentally change or destroy the world that we're living in because he does see it he does see its destructive potential he does see how it will distill nature to a base form and strip it of its mystery um, and how we are how we can come to um, define ourselves through technology and he doesn't think that's correct he doesn't think that that's you think that's allowing technology to control us and shape our world that that will take away the mystery of it and take away the being that we should be striving towards okay so most of this will boils down to technology is mysterious and much like nature and human beings and um, being itself um, it's wrapped up it wrapped up in this mystery and it's ambiguous um, human technology isn't meant to control us we have to work to keep a balance between us and it and work to not let it rule over us to destroy the idea of being and the mystery uh, it's not demonic he see he does see the value in technology he does see the mystery there um, but he's also aware of how much it can control us and how it are has um, already has shaped and changed the way we think about certain things and how that is not a good thing and he's trying to basically change change or revert it before it's too late before we become too wrapped up in this idea of technology as something that um, is keeps the world in a quantifiable state um, and he urges people to reflect on being the idea of being and questioning it and I mean well, the title, the questioning concerning technology, um, he's he's looking for people to question this idea that we hold of technology currently, um, and move from being controlled by it to um, reveling in the mystery of it. So our relationship to the essence of technology, um, this is related to kind of also how we relate our relationship to nature, and that we can't assert our will over it. Um, we, he's, you're just to kind of learn, live in harmony with it and live in a way that, um, it's present and it's mysterious and kind of under, understand the causality and work towards a balance. That's what he believes is our relationship with technology and with nature needs to be one of balance and, um, in a way respect, um, respect for the mystery and, um, not trying to master anything or to put ourselves above it um, but to coexist and this isn't that he want, necessarily wants technology to be a part of us because he doesn't want that either he wants us to, um, I think he's looking to res respect the power that technology has um, but and to not let us, to and respecting that power, not let us over be overcome by it and utilizing it in a way that benefits um, nature and being but doesn't let it overtake us okay so I try to kind of put this also in a modern context to understand it better because the, te the text is very dense and what I was able to unpack out of it and talk about I also want to relate back to um, our, our view of technology today and uh, I guess to start off, Heidegger is probably not very pleased with how we've been view using and viewing technology. That we have been, we have very much defined ourselves through technology. I mean, Facebook is already the most obvious example of this, and that we have our online profiles and we communicate with people through this. And it's definitely not something he would agree with. Um, you know, we've been opposing our thoughts and our will on the internet, and whether or not he would consider the internet to be a part of um, the real or nature is. Um, up the, is not really something I can say, but by conforming it to our desires and to we are limiting it and limiting ourselves, um, like Facebook is an excellent example of that limitation. Um, it distills us into an online profile, distills us into um, a singular view that people can go look up and they feel like they know us, but they don't. There's, it's kind of related to how um, uh, talking about the real and how you can't code the real and. Um, Heidegger would say we're trying to strive towards that, we're trying to attempt to quantify and code the real, but 
we really shouldn't be. We should be striving to um, uh, be aware of the mystery that technology brings and has, but not try to conform to it or have it um, master it or have it master us. Okay, so these are my sources that I used for this, um, this presentation, and I hope this presentation was helpful and that you can use it for class discussion.